In this video, we're going to be tackling a more complicated shot using Copycat to do some deblurring. This is the same footage as the last video, except now we're going to be focusing on a larger part of the shot, which includes areas like this where she's more out of focus. So let's get started. It's important to note that we're not trying to bring sharpness back into the entire piece of footage. There's areas here where she's quite clearly completely out of focus intentionally. The aim with this process is to bring back sharpness into the areas where she's slightly out of focus, but the intention probably was for her to be in focus here. So let's use this frame where she's slightly soft as one of our reference frames. So I'm going to add a frame hold here. Next we want to go to a frame where she's in focus and we can use the information from that and move it onto this frame for the copycat training. So if we look around here, you can see on these frames she's more in focus. So let's grab one of these. I'm going to add a frame hold for this frame as well. So now this is our soft frame. And this is our sharp frame. Like the previous video, we're going to take this frame and using a vector generator and a couple of other methods, we're going to essentially warp it into the position of this one and then train Copycat to work out the differences between the two. There's a few processes for doing this. First of all, obviously, we're going to have to match the framing of the two by warping this one into the correct position. There's also some differences in the lighting and the color on her face that we're going to have to account for as well. So first of all, let's remove these highlights from her face. As you can see here, it's just that bright highlight on the nose. So I'm going to start by isolating the high frequency details by blurring the plate slightly and then using a from operation to take this away from the original source. And as you can see, this just gives me the really high frequency skin detail. Then while looking at the blurred plate, I can add a rotor paint node and make some corrections to the highlights. And this will allow me to match better to this frame here. If I turn the blur off for a second, switching between the two, I can see I need to remove the highlights on her cheek that aren't present in this frame. And I also need to bring the light down on her nose slightly to match the shape of this more. So let's do that now. I'm gonna turn the blur back on and I'm just gonna use the smear brush to start off with and just drag some of the pixels across her face and see if I can get rid of these highlights on her cheek. I can also use the clone brush and just duplicate some of the pixels where there's some darker skin tones. That's done a pretty good job for the cheek. Now I'm gonna smear the highlights down on her nose slightly and just try and roughly match the shape of this highlight to the one in the other frame. Then what we can do is use the high frequency detail and plus this back on top of the blurred version with the paint changes. And this should restore all of the skin detail. So now if I flick between the two, you can see it's working pretty well. I need to go a bit stronger on the paintwork on the cheek. Then next we want to use the vector generator like before to warp this onto the soft image. So I'm gonna add a switch node first of all, connect the two together. Then on frame zero, add a keyframe and then go to frame one and then add another keyframe and switch it to input one. Then add a vector generator, plug this in. And as you can see, we now have the forward and backward channels. Then I'm going to add a shuffle node, plug the B input into the sharp frame, the A input into the vector generator, then set the second input to A and change it from none, obviously to motion, which will copy the forward and backward channels into the stream. Set the second box to motion and then we can copy across all of the channels. And now we have them here. Then add an eye distort node, which will allow us to utilize those motion channels. Set the UV channels to motion. And clearly I did it the opposite way around. So let's select the switch, press shift X, and that will change the inputs over. So one is now going to the sharp frame and zero is going to the soft frame. And as you can see, that's now working correctly. So now this is the sharp frame before, and this is after. So it's now in the correct position and it has the highlights painted out on the cheeks. Next, let's try and extract some of these really bright highlights. To do so, first of all, we're gonna try and grade our sharp frame to be a bit closer to this one. So to do that, I'm gonna use a color correct node and I'm gonna turn up the contrast and the gain a little bit until we get something fairly similar. Something like that looks pretty good. Now we're going to try and extract all of the lighting and color from the original defocused frame and put it onto this one. And by the end of this, they should be pretty much identical. Just like we did here, we're gonna start blurring the image again. I'm gonna make myself a little bit of room here and make a little noodle off to the side. I'm gonna add a blur node and I'm gonna blur this a fair bit. So let's go for 100 pixels. Then I'm gonna divide the original image by the blurred version. So set the operation to divide. As you can see, that goes pretty nuclear. And then what we want to do is take our original soft frame and blur it by the same amount. So I'm gonna copy the blur and just connect it up here and then make it a little bit neater. So this is also being blurred by 100. And then we want to do the opposite of this merge operation. So as it's a divide, we want to multiply these two together. So plug it in, set the merge operation to multiply. This looks a bit nuts at the moment. I need to switch the inputs around on the first merge. So select it, press shift X, and that will swap the inputs over. And now you should notice that the colors between the two are almost exactly the same. 
Basically what this first blur and divide here is doing is taking all of the color information out of the frame that we're creating. And then we've blurred the original frame that we're trying to replicate by the same amount and multiplied it on top which is then taking all of the color from our soft frame and putting it on top of the one that we're generating. So as you can see, they're now looking pretty similar. They're pretty close now, but there's still a little bit more to do. So let's go back to this color correct that we created here. We're now gonna do the same sort of operation as up here with the from and the plus operations. So I'm gonna blur this color corrected plate slightly by about 60 pixels. Then I'm gonna do a from operation between these two. And that's just gonna give us the high frequency detail again. Then I'm gonna select this blur and press Alt K again to create a duplicate of it. And we're going to plug this into our original soft frame again. And we're going to plus this on top. Now at the moment this looks really crazy. But all we really need to extract from this is the highlight details. So what I'm going to do is add a Kia. And I'm just going to key the highlights on her face. So if I look at the alpha channel. Crank this up quite a bit. Then I'm going to add a key mix node. And I'm going to key mix between the original background of the soft plate. And the A input is going to be on this that we've just created. And the mask is obviously going to be the luma key that we've done. We're getting some pretty horrible artifacting and negative pixels on these bits around the hair. And to soften the effect of this, we can try and do some of these merge operations in log, which will make them a bit softer. So to do that, we want to add a log to lin node. I'm going to plug it in just after the color correct here. Our footage is currently in linear and we want to change it into a log color space. So change this operation to lin to log. Then we want to do the same thing on the blurs that we've done here and also here. And then after this plus operation, we want to change it back from log to linear. So add a fourth one and then set this operation back to log to lin. And now as you can see, if I turn these four nodes off, that's massively reducing all the impact that these operations are having on the plate. Now I'm going to take the B input and instead of plugging it into the soft frame, I'm going to plug it into the sharp frame that we're generating before all of these operations. So take the B input and just plug it in up here. So this is now the result that we have. We've now got a pretty good match between the lighting and the color in both. Then finally, the cherry on top is I'm going to take this color match plate that we did over on the left hand side and key mix this on top of everything else. So the B input goes in here, the A input goes into the color match plate, and then I'm just going to use a rotor shape to define which areas I want to key mix on top. So I'm pretty much going to do her whole body except for her nose where the highlight is really hot. I'm just going to add a mask for there, and then I'm just going to take the nose out of this by drawing a shape around it and setting this to minus. And then if we blur this quite a lot, That's working pretty nicely. Now if I flick between the two, we've now matched the position, the color and the light intensity and high frequency detail between the two. Now the only thing that's left to fix is the stretching on the edges of the frame. Because we're only tweaking her, we can just use the original background from the soft frame. So what I'm going to do is add another key mix. The B input is going to go into our soft frame, which is up here. The A input is going to go into the frame that we're creating. And then I'm just going to draw a soft mat around her to just isolate her on top of the soft background. Give this a bit of a blur. There we go. So now the backgrounds match perfectly between the two. This is me flicking between the original soft frame and where we're at now. So that's a pretty good jumping off point to try and get Copycat to recognize the differences between those frames. Next up, let's define a few different sections for Copycat to look at. We can do this using a few crop nodes. So I'm gonna add the first one. There's three main sections to get it to look at. I think we're gonna do the left shoulder and the torso, the right shoulder and the torso, and then her face and hair. So first of all, let's just drag the crop down to be her left shoulder and torso. If you turn on reformat in the crop node, it will then reformat the crop to just that bounding box. Let's add a dot in here and then create the second one. For this one, let's just do her face and hair. Reformat it again. Maybe give it a little bit more of the torso as well. And then for the last one, let's do the right hand shoulder. So just here. And there we go. Those are the three regions that we're going to train Copycat on. I'm going to select all three of those and add an append clip node. So now it's creating a sequence from those three crops. What we can do is go up to the top and just add a frame range node under the footage so that it knows just to use one frame for each of those. So set both of these boxes to one. Now if I look at this append clip and change the input. It will make an image sequence out of those three reference frames that we've defined. Now because it's quite a long shot, we probably want to give it more than one reference frame. So we're going to basically do this process again on a slightly different frame. And that will give Copycat more data for the training. So let's pick our second reference frame. This one looks pretty good where she's still soft. So now let's put a frame hold here. So this is our second soft frame. Let's just call it soft frame two. Very inventive. So now essentially we want to take this sharp frame again and move it into this position, match all the lighting and everything. So first of all, just to get them in the same sort of ballpark, let's just add a transform onto the sharp frame. 
and try and roughly get it in the same sort of position as this new one. So if I put it on the nose, for example, I can kind of move this transform point on top of the nose on the soft frame. And then when I flick between the two, they should be fairly similar. It's just a bit of a scale difference. So let's try like 1.1, pretty good. The other noticeable differences here are obviously the highlights on the nose and the cheeks again, and also her hair is in a slightly different position. So I'm just gonna do a bit of paintwork on the face to fix that, and then just roto the bits of the hair and transform them into place so that the general positioning matches a bit better. Again, I'm blurring the plate and then doing a from operation to separate the high frequency detail. Then on the blurred version, I'm gonna do all of my paintwork. So I'm just gonna use the clone brush to duplicate some of the cheek over the top of this highlight. And the same thing for the nose. This time I'm completely gonna paint the highlight off the nose because there's none present in the soft frame that I'm replicating. I think that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna add a frame hold onto this so that it keeps the paint strokes and all the frames. And then let's plus the high frequency detail back on top. Again, in the high frequency detail, there's that highlight on the nose. So I'm also gonna add a paint node on here and just clone paint that out. So let's just get rid of all this highlight stuff on the nose because none of it's present in the other frame. Okay, frame hold this as well. And then if we look back at the plus, we should see it's all gone. Next, let's sort out the hair. So I'm gonna add a rotor shape and just cut out this side section first. Let's plug this in here, turn on replace, which will replace the alpha with just the rotor shape that I've drawn. Blur it a little bit. Let's only blur the alpha. And then we can pre-molt this, which will cut it out. Then I'm gonna stick a transform node onto here and set the pivot point to be the top of the hair. And then I'm gonna merge this back on top of the painted plate that I've just made. And then we're gonna flick between this and the new soft frame and try and match the position of the hair. So it looks to me like it needs to be rotated outwards a fair bit. Something like that, I think. Then obviously we have to deal with the duplication of the hair. So to do that in the paint setup here on the blurred plate, we can basically just duplicate some of the neck and stretch some of her face outwards to get rid of the hair. So I'm gonna do a combination of using the smear brush and just kind of smear her face outwards like this. And that's gonna sort out the hair on the side of the face. And then on the neck, I'm just gonna use the clone brush and just clone paint her skin over the top. It can be fairly rough because this is just painting the block colors and then the high frequency detail is gonna be put back on top, which brings back all the sharpness. It's kind of working for the skin detail. Now we need to do the same thing on the high frequency. So let's just paint out all of these bits of highlights on the hair. And there we go, that looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. So now if we compare the two, those two bits of hair are pretty similar. I'm just gonna do the same thing to this side as well. So again, add a rotor shape, and I'm gonna set it to replace and just cut out this side of the hair. Add a pre molt node to cut it out, blur the alpha slightly by adding a blur node, setting the channels just to alpha, and just cranking this up. Add a transform, set the anchor point to the top of the hair, and we're gonna merge this on top of the rest of the plate. And then once again, comparing between the two, we can just kind of rotate the hair into a better position. And then again, let's just paint out any unneeded bits of hair. That's pretty good. So currently this is what we've done to the plate. I'm just gonna do a little bit of paint work just to get rid of that horrible edge from the highlight. So finally, another road to paint node. And let's just do a very soft amount of opacity and just paint over those edges. And there we go, so that's the before and after now. I'm gonna add another frame hold node just to preserve all the paint strokes in this paint node. Now what we want to do is again, do the vector generator technique to move this sharp frame on top of our new intended position. First of all, to undo this transform I did at the top just to get the positions to match a bit better, I'm gonna duplicate it and put it underneath the frame hold and then tick the invert box, which will basically do the inverse of the transform that I did up here. It's cropping the image a little bit, which probably means our paint nodes and stuff need to be set to no clip so that they don't go off the edge of the frame. And there we go, that's brought back the plate. So now once again, I'm gonna add a switch node and just switch between these two. So zero into the soft frame, one into the sharp frame, and then let's go to the first frame in the timeline, set a keyframe on zero, and then go to frame one and set it to one. Then add another vector generator and then another shuffle node and plug this in underneath our sharp frame and plug the A input into the vector generator. And again, set the second box to A and copy across the motion channels and then drag the box across to connect all the channels together. And then we can use an eye distort node once again, set to motion. And if I go to frame zero, that should be warping the image into the correct position, which it is. 
There's quite a bit of nasty artifacting going on from the distortion, so I'm just going to change some of the vector settings and see if I can get a better result. Looks like turning the vector detail down to about 0.074 made quite a big difference. This is where it was before on the default. It just changed the way the image is warped ever so slightly, but I don't think it's much of a difference if I compare the two. So it's probably worth it to try and get as little artifacting in the hair as possible. So let's add a frame hold here to just keep it on our sharp frame that's warped. Next what we want to do is extract all the lighting information from this plate and apply it to our new sharp frame in the same position. So just like before, I'm going to add a blur node onto here, blur it by 100 pixels. I'm going to do the log to lin trick again, so that we don't do anything too damaging to the image. Set this to lin to log, which is going to put it in log. Let's put this below the blur. Then I'm going to divide the blurred version by the original plate. And let's also duplicate this log to lin node and put it under the plate as well. And set this merge operation to divide. Flip the inputs around. At the moment it doesn't look like much, but if I duplicate the log to lin node again and set it back to linear, you can see a little bit of the color information coming back. Then we want to do exactly the same thing with the original plate. So let's add another lin to log, blur it, put it below the blur. Now we want to multiply this blurred color data from the original soft frame over the top of the plate that we're creating. So add a merge node. B goes into the comped plate, A goes into the soft frame, and then set the merge operation to multiply. And then under here is the log to lin node, which puts it back in the correct color space. And now if we compare the two, you can see the lighting is now very similar. The only thing that's a bit messed up from this process is you can see the torso is getting quite warped. So what we can do is take a different frame where the torso is sharp, warp it into position, match the lighting as well, and then just key mix it on top for the bottom bit of her body. So let's find a frame where her torso is pretty sharp. Just gonna add a little bit more contrast so I can see what I'm doing. Frame 332 looks pretty good. Let's grab a frame hold on this. Shouldn't have to do any paint work on this as it's fairly similar. So we're just going to jump straight into doing the vector generator technique. Add a dot and connect it to the frame that we're using to build everything else from. And now we want to warp this sharp torso frame over the top of this frame that we've used to build everything else. First of all, let's match the position between these two a bit better. I'm going to add a transform. That looks pretty close. Then let's do what we did last time, add a switch node. Zero goes into the torso, one goes into our comp frame. Make sure we're on frame zero on the timeline keyframe zero, next frame, set the switch to one. Then add a vector generator again. Then let's grab the shuffle node from over here so we don't have to keep setting up the channels every time. Copy and paste it under the transform, plug the A input into the vector generator, and then add an eye distort. And set the UV channels to motion. Looks like the inputs are the wrong way around again, so select the switch, press shift X. And now if I compare the result of the eye distort to the soft frame, the torsos match pretty much exactly. There's a bit of artifacting going on, so I'm just going to turn up the vector generator detail to one. That's helped a bit. There's still a little bit of warping, so I'm going to add a blur node and blur the motion channel by about 100 pixels as well. And that seems to have done a pretty good job. Now again, we need to match the lighting between these two. So first of all, let's add a blur node and distort this by about 100 pixels. Then log to lin again and change it to lin to log. Then divide this blurred version by the original. So let's add another lin to log node and divide these two. Swap the inputs around so the B is going into the blur. Then duplicate the blur in the lin to log node. Copy and paste it over here and plug it into the original soft frame. And then divide these two by each other. Like so. Then we want to multiply the result of this over the top of this merge node here. So add another merge. B into the top one. A into the divided result. Set this one to multiply. And then finally we want to multiply this over the blurred version of our new torso. So add another merge. B goes into here. A goes into the multiply result and set this one to multiply as well. Then another log to lin node and we have our result. The lighting and position now match but as you can see the torso is now sharp. Now what we can do is key mix this over the top of the comp plate that we did of her face. So add a key mix, the B goes into the head and the A goes into the new torso that we created up here and then we can just soft mat the two together with a mask. So if I compare the two now, this is the original soft frame and this is the comped version with the sharp torso and the sharp face. Then we want to do the same thing as before where we give copycat a cropped region to focus on. So under this key mix, I'm going to add a crop node and just focus it on the face. Reformat this. And then on top of this, I'm just going to separate it out into the lower part of the face and the upper part of the face. So add another crop node. Let's just do the nose down and reformat that. And then let's do the same thing but above. So now we have those two. And then we also want to do one just for the torso. And then again, let's put all of these into an append clip node. And plug this one in as well. 
And if I set my timeline to input, I've now got an image sequence, which is these four pieces of the frame to focus on. Okay, so now we're at the stage where we want to start making our input plates as well. Currently what we've been doing here is for the ground truth, which is basically the comp input that you give Copycat to try and learn. And the input plates are the completely untouched reference frames that we give it that have no comp work done on them. And then when it looks between the two, it can try and work out what the differences are and how to replicate them. So first of all, this is our first soft frame that we started the training on. And then down here are the crops of the eventual sharp frame that we've created. So what we want to do is create a duplicate of this setup here that's being done on the original plate without any comp work. So I'm going to take these four nodes here, copy and paste them with control C and then control V. And then I'm going to plug them directly into the soft frame input up here. And I'm going to create a bit of a gap in between the two so it's really clear which is which. Next we want to create an image that is our original soft frame but it has the lighting that's matched to the sharp frame. So what we're going to do is take both of these, so I'm going to add a couple of postage stamps and connect them up here. So this one is soft frame, just hide the input with Alt H and then I'm going to duplicate this and plug it into my sharp frame and name this sharp frame. Then we're going to take both of these and blur them by about 60 pixels and do the same color matching technique that we used earlier. So I'm going to put a log to lin node under these two, change it to lin to log. Then on our soft frame, I'm going to take away the blurred version from the original image. So I'm going to duplicate the log to lin node again, and then do a from operation just like all the other ones. And then on top of this, I'm going to plus the blurred version of our sharp frame, which is over here. And then finally go back from log to linear. Now currently the two don't match because obviously the two frames are different. So what we need to do is actually connect the sharp frame to the input after the eye distort once it's been warped into the same position. So now the sharp frame should match the same place as it does. And there we go, we've now matched the lighting. So this is before and this is after. Then again, we want to crop the various regions of this image. So I'm gonna add a few crops in here, connect the first one up and let's do the left hand shoulder again, reformat this. Then I'm gonna duplicate this crop and plug it in over here and move it to the right hand side of her body. And then finally we'll do one for her face. That looks pretty good. Let's plug all of these together into an append clip node. And lastly, just to make sure the background colors are staying the same, we can key mix her with the lighting changes over the original background so that the stuff behind her doesn't change. So I'm gonna add a key mix node. The B input is gonna be our background and the A input is gonna be the color matched version. And then we can just do a soft map and isolate her from the background. Use that as the mask. And now as you can see, the only thing that's changing in this is her. And then we can plug the crops into our key mix and that is that setup. And then finally, we want to duplicate these four crop nodes that we created for frame 362, which is the other soft frame with the slightly different position. So I'm gonna take all of these, control C and duplicate them over here. And I'm gonna plug this dot directly into the frame hold for 362. So we're bypassing any of the comp stuff again. Okay, let's just do some labeling so it's clear what's going on. So this is our original soft frame. Then we have our soft frame with the lighting color match to the sharp frame. So let's say soft frame color matched. And then finally, we've got frame 362 or whatever it was. Yeah, 362. Soft frame two. Okay, so this is our input plates here. And on the left hand side, we have our ground truth plates. The final thing to do is just duplicate this setup with the color matching on the comp plates that we've done over here. So let's make ourselves a little bit more space. I'm gonna take one of these postage stamps again, and I'm gonna put it over here. And I'm gonna plug this one into the first distorted sharp frame that we created. And I'm just gonna call this warped sharp frame. And then I'm gonna duplicate it and plug the second one into the key mix that we just created over here of the two frames color matched together. And again, all we're gonna do is key mix her over the top and we can even grab the key mix from this setup. So let's grab the mask and the key mix. And all we're gonna do is put her color matched over the top of the original background. So again, we're not changing anything except for her. So there we go, that's the before and after. The reason for that was just that in this warped version, you can see there's some problems with the background again. And then again, what we want to do is duplicate the crops from this section over here. So let's just grab these three and plug them in over here. So now we have two setups in parallel. We have all of our comp ground truths over here and all of our inputs over here. Now for the training of copycat, we just want to generate two image sequences for both of these. So what I'm gonna do is make another append clip node for each of these setups. And I'm gonna plug it into the other append clip nodes from each side. So we're gonna do one for the ground truths, which is here. And then a second one over here for all of our input plates. 
And then just so that copycat doesn't have to process all of these nodes every time, we can write these out as a PNG sequence before any of the training happens. So inside of a folder that I created for the pre-comps, I'm going to call this first one groundtruth.hashtag.png, which is going to create as an image sequence. Then I'm going to copy and paste the right node and plug it in over here. And this is going to be our input plates. So let's rename this to input. And then finally, before I write these out, I'm just going to create something called an identity frame. This is going to be one frame in the footage where she's sharp, and I'm going to use the same frame plugged into both sides of the setup. This acts almost like a neutral frame so that copycat has a reference of something that's the same in both. So to do that, I'm going to add another frame hold. And I'm going to go to another frame in the sequence where she's sharp. Let's go for 345. So I'm going to take this frame hold, plug it in up here. And then we're going to plug the append clip for both sides into this frame hold as well. So that this is included in the sequence. Cool, and now we can write out these two image sequences. So if I set my timeline to input, you can see that we should have 11 frames on each. So what we want to do is write out frame one to 11 for both of these. Cool, those are finished. Now we can read them both back in. So here we have our PNG sequences called ground truth and input. Input plate is there. Ground truth goes over here. And now finally, this is the point where we actually create the copycat node. So let's add it in. The ground truth goes into the ground truth, as you can imagine, and the input goes into the input. Then inside the copycat node, we can set the data directory. I've put mine inside of a subfolder called copycat. Under the advanced tab, we can set the initial weight to dblur. I'm gonna leave the epochs on the default, which is 10,000, and now we can press start training. Ah, it's come up with an error saying that the input and ground truth sequences are of different sizes. That's interesting. I think it might just be due to the frame padding, so let's fix that. Let's delete these images, and I'm gonna do that again. Let's add another three hashtags onto here so that the padding is four digits long. Let's see if that fixes it. Render these again. Okay, now if I read those image sequences back in, they should have better padding on them. So, ground truth, input, start training. And we're off. There we go, that fixed it. Just like the other copycat training video, once you start the training, this box will appear on the left hand side. This displays our input plates, our ground truth, which is the comp, and then the output, which is currently where the training is at. And eventually, as the training progresses, you should see that the output becomes closer and closer to the ground truth. So I'm going to leave this going, and then we'll come back when it finishes. Okay, the training is finished. Now to see what we've achieved, we can press the Create Inference button, which will create the inference node for us. And then we can take this and plug it into one of our soft frames to see it in action. So again, just to recap, this is the original soft frame that we started out with, frame 356. Then if I look at the inference node, if I turn it on and off, you can see how much detail it's bringing back. There's loads of detail being restored in the out of focus hair where we can start to see some of the individual strands again. It's also bringing back a load of definition in her teeth and you can see the edge of the lip becomes a lot sharper like it's more in focus. It's also doing a really impressive job of restoring specular highlights on the nose and in the eyes. You can see this is before. On the nose, you basically can't see them and in the eyes, they're very, very soft. With it on, the highlights on the nose become basically pin sharp and you can see the same thing is happening in the eyes as well. And just generally in the hair, it's doing a really cool job of restoring fine details. You can see the individual strands again. So that's one frame. Let's have a look at it on the other soft frame. So this is frame 362. This is without the training or any comp work. And this is the inference node doing its magic. Again, before and after, you can see it's doing a really cool job on the teeth and the nose and the highlights on the eyes. There's just so much softness and clarity that's being restored in all the important bits of the frame. And then I guess finally, let's plug it into a different frame that we didn't do any of the training on, as the idea of this after all is to replicate it across the whole sequence. So let's go and find a random frame where she's a bit soft. This one looks pretty good. This is frame 379 that we haven't done anything to in terms of comp work before. This is before, and this is with the inference node enabled. And the same thing is happening here. So we're seeing a lot of restoration in the detail around the eyes and the eyelashes and the sharpness in the highlights. Her teeth and her lip become a lot sharper again, and we're getting some restoration in the detail of the hair as well. So there we go. That's a demo on how Copycat handles deblurring a more complicated shot. Thank you for watching.